room with around 50 kids that I've never met before, never seen before, and we were all asked the same question. What pisses you off? And we're teenagers. So I had a good 300 at the top of my list. I was like, homework, homework pisses me off. School, in general, pisses me off. When people open my door when it's closed, that pisses me off. But I realized those weren't necessarily impactful. Everyone had like all of these amazing ventures and ideas, and I was like, what could I do that can ultimately change the world? And if anyone knows me, they know I'm probably the most indecisive human being they will ever meet. The first week, I was going to solve world hunger, um, and then I was going to you know, end poverty in all of America. Um, pretty much by the fifth week, I was going to bring world peace to humankind, and I knew I could do it. I mean, it was like the super answer. It pretty much solved everything. Um, but I realized it was really unrealistic. So I did what every other smart high school student would do when they don't know the answer to a question. I Googled it, and I found nothing. So I opened another tab, you know, because I am online, uh, and I checked my Facebook. And then, you know, once you check Facebook, you have to check your Twitter, it's hand in hand. So I went on Twitter. But then I had my eye touch next to me, so I was like, Instagram, you know. Maybe that'll give me something. And then after Instagram, I was like, pictures, pictures, Tumblr. And I haven't checked my Tumblr in a while, and I need to update it. And then I was like, oh, there are videos on Tumblr. Let me stalk a celebrity for three hours. <laughs> so I did that. Um, and I found no solution to my answer at all. So I went to school the next day, a little tired, um, still empty-headed, and I worked on our school newspaper instead. Um, and if anyone knows, last year I was the international editor of our school's newspaper, the A Blast. There's some out there. <laughs> and we decided to do a spread on international intellect. So pretty much, how well does the average teenager know about issues that are going on in the world today that are international? Um, so we would pretty much haunt the poor kids in the hallways and stop them and ask them questions. For instance, one of our questions, this is last year, we asked them, where was Osama bin Laden killed? Um, if anyone doesn't know, it was Pakistan. Our number one answer was in his house, which was good in the United States, which is a little far off. Um, and then, this is also the same time as a huge famine um, in the Horn of Africa. Um, and all you had to do really was turn on the TV and you were going to hear about it. Um, and we asked the kids, what region of the world was there a famine? And we actually, I can't believe it, got four of the same answers, and it was Hungary. And the kids thought it was so funny, because, you know, hungry, hungry. Then we decided to have some fun. And we showed them pictures of world leaders, iconic world leaders, and we asked them who this person is. Does anyone know who this is? Uh, <laughs> Our number one answer was Buddha. <laughs> no, no, it gets worse. Does anyone know who that is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Our number one answer was Betty. <laughs> My personal favorite, though. Does anyone know who this is? our problem was. And I'll test it out on you. How many of you guys know who this is? <laughs> Thank you. How many of you can like sing a song from heart? And how many of you guys can name all five of you? Who can name them? After seeing that, I realized we had a problem. Um, and then it kind of hit me. I was like, the biggest problem, I think, in our generation is that we're kind of seen as a generation of ignorance. You know, we know a lot about entertainment, we know a lot about certain things, we watch the movies sometimes, but we don't necessarily know about things that are affecting us right now. Um, and we're kind of seen as the generation of ignorance, the generation that really doesn't know what they're doing. Um, and I came down and I thought about it, and I was like, that's what we really ultimately need to fix, because we are the generation of technology. We have so many resources around us, and yet, we fail to actually use them, um, which is why I created Real Talk Radio, which is an online live radio podcast for teens in the DMV area to listen, speak, and inevitably change their communities. Our goal at Real Talk is to just get kids to speak. Um, and we talk about podcasts ranging from entertainment to politics to religion, just so that teens can find something to talk about and keep doing it.
we are, after all, the generation of change. And that's what I think we should be, you know, surrounded around. Um, for the past three hours or so, you've been hearing about amazing people with amazing ventures and amazing ideas. Um, and they're all ideas that need to be heard, all ideas that need to be spoken about. And we have this theme, and it seems so cliche, but if you really dream something, then you have to do it. Um, and I'll use myself as an example. Um, if anyone also knows me, they also know I have the biggest girl crush on Michelle Obama. And I wrote an article about it, and I'm actually a blogger for the Huffington Post. So I posted it with the title of Why I Love Michelle Obama. Um, and three weeks later, she actually contacted me, and I actually got to meet her. She read my article, which seems absolutely crazy, but really encompasses, I think, the whole theme. I know, I never thought I would meet her. It's, it's Michelle Obama. She's like the first lady of the United States. You don't necessarily think about it. But it was a dream of mine, and I just wrote about it, not necessarily thinking about it. And it happened. Um, and I think everyone's been just trying to like push this idea on you guys that you know, no matter how big of an idea we have or how crazy of an idea it may seem, we actually have the capability to do it. And it's time 